For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. Maple top guitars are absolutely gorgeous to me. These are flame maple. This here is quilted maple. Project Pink Jackson has been put on hold temporarily. I'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes. So the next guitar I'll be working on is this mid-90s Jackson Performer with the flame maple top. The beautiful stripes you see are actually characteristics of the wood. This is not the paint creating this effect. Guitar builders apply translucent paints and dyes to the top of these guitars to really showcase the beautiful wood grain. Some of these guitars even have a second color added to the edges called a burst. Some painters, like Ryan Dominguez, head painter at ESP USA, have perfected this technique. I absolutely love the finish on this guitar. I would love to keep it for myself, but as I approach 50 guitars in my collection, I gotta start thinning the herd a little bit, and I can't keep adding them, especially when I already have four Jackson Dinkies like this in my collection. The plan for this guitar is gonna be to leave the finish how it is. I'm gonna polish it up to give it a little more shine and get rid of some of the small scratches, but that's about it. I like the way it looks, and I'm gonna keep it this way. I'm gonna swap out the pickups for a set of brushed gold EMG 5766 pickups. These are a more modern sounding pickup than the standard 81, 85, or 8160 combo a lot of guitarists use. And the brushed gold is gonna look insane on this guitar. I'll be drilling a hole here to add the kill switch, a gold one with a blue LED light. And since I'm gonna be removing the tone on this guitar, I'm actually gonna put in the boost switch right here to give it a 20 decibel boost whenever needed for a little more power. I'll be adding this gold Floyd Rose licensed bridge. I also picked up this really cool gold knob with the blue inlay on top. I'll also be replacing all the screws, the tuners, and the strap buttons with gold. This thing is gonna look sick. All right, now it's time to strip this thing down, pull off all the hardware, rip out the pickups, get the fretboard and the frets in nice working order, and drill another hole for a kill switch. Unlike Project Pink, I'm gonna actually remove the tone on this guitar and add a boost switch in that position because I don't want to extend the cavity like I did on that guitar. It's a lot more work and you actually have to refinish since the cavities don't support space for extra holes. But for this guitar, I'm not gonna be repainting any of it, so I don't wanna be removing any of the factory paint. 95% of the guitarists I know don't really use the tone knob anyway, so I think it's gonna be fine, especially since this is a metal guitar. But before ripping that guitar apart, I actually found another potential great guitar project. So tomorrow, I'm gonna go check it out. All right, I'm on my way across town. I just got a lead on an LTD MH1000, which is a badass guitar. They sell for about eight or nine hundred dollars, and this guy on Craigslist. I ended up getting this guitar for three hundred and seventy-five dollars, and I traded him an amp stand that I've never used, and I got for free from somebody. Right when I picked this thing up, I knew I had to keep it. I immediately gave it the Mark Murray treatment. I gave it some black chrome EMG 5766 pickups, and I added an Iron Age accessories kill switch with a white LED. Now this thing's ready to shred. I just fell in love with the way that the neck feels and the heel on it and the action and the playability of this thing is just incredible. Plus, it's absolutely gorgeous. I was honestly blown away by how good this thing plays. So despite my best effort to not add any more guitars to my personal collection, I guess I have to. I mean, there's always room for just one more. It's a gorgeous guitar loaded with EMG pickups already and black chrome hardware, a quilted maple top, and abalone binding. I mean, this thing, it's called the Deluxe model for a reason. Project Pink has been put on hold, and that's because I found a buyer for it. Anytime I'm in the middle of a build for a guitar and I find a buyer for it, I'm more than happy to build it to their specifications. This buyer actually wanted a different paint job, 
different pickups, and even better, the Haxon mod. A while back I had the idea to cut the bottom horn off a Jackson I had sitting around. I did it because I was talking to Thomas McRocklin on the Guitar Guts podcast, and Thomas told me your hand position shouldn't be really changing that much as you fly around the neck. I noticed his guitars are much less invasive than mine. I have pretty huge hands, so I decided to experiment. I hacked the horn off this Jackson, thus forming the Haxon. This here is what the Haxon guitar currently looks like. I just finished doing a flat black finish on it with green alien blood splatter. Um, I mounted a maple neck onto it and this thing is just beautiful. I really like the way it's turning out so far. I'm gonna wire it up and get it all ready to start playing. But I'm not the only one who loves this thing. The buyer for what was Project Pink loves this thing too and said, give me the Haxon. Now that I received the down payment, we can consider Project Pink canceled and Project Haxon 2 underway. Let's go chop that thing up. I'll give you the full plan for this guitar soon, but for now, let's just enjoy this. I use a bandsaw for this. I actually kept the old piece I cut off the old guitar and traced it onto this one. Came out perfect, but the ends are sharp, so I sanded the edges and cleaned it all up. I even did additional sanding to the heel for higher fret access. I'll get back to this guitar, but it's time to get into the Blue Flame Maple Jackson. The first steps for stripping a guitar down for a rebuild are to remove the strings, pull out the bridge, pull out the tuners, strip the electronics and pickups, and remove the neck. Now it's time to drill the hole for the kill switch. I always get a little nervous doing this. I always think that maybe the bit's gonna go in and grip onto the guitar and rip it out of my hand, spin it around in circles and tear a huge hole in the top of it. But it never happens. It always comes out perfect with this drill bit and this drill press. But I will admit I do have one or two guitars that I have kill switches for that I still haven't put them in. Another perfect kill switch hole drilled. After wiping down the body, you can see just how perfect that is. Anytime you do any work, grinding, or drilling holes in a guitar, you always want to give it a nice wipe down afterwards. You don't want to have anything left over on it and accidentally add extra scratches to the body. The body is just about ready, so we can install the electronics. After installing the pickups, I'm seeing that the preamp switch needs more space. The guitar body is too thick, so I'll need to countersink the switch from the inside. So I used a Dremel with a depth attachment while simultaneously vacuum to keep the shavings to a minimum. And if you're wondering, no, I don't have three arms. I have a fiance who is more than willing to help me with this. Now it's onto the neck. It's pretty dried out. Remember, this is a 25 year old guitar, but to be honest, it's in great shape. I like to restore my rosewood fretboards with lemon oil, making sure there is no silicone or water in the solution. I brush it in, let it soak a bit, and then with a soft rag, I use the lemon oil to clean off any dirt or junk on the fretboard. I picked up a set of Japanese Goto tuners a while back for another Jackson project, but I decided to use them on this guitar. Make the headstock really pop, make it look really flashy, and man, it looks awesome. Now onto the wiring. The thing I love about EMGs is the solderless wiring system. They're so fast and easy to install, and troubleshoot if you have any problems. In the middle pickup position, I'll be installing a dummy pickup, just for looks. It won't actually be hooked up to anything. EMG doesn't actually make a gold single coil pickup, so there's no real good options out there. But I had this single coil cover and I hit it with a scotch bright pad, so it kind of matches the EMGs. The pickups actually match pretty well when you see it in person, but it didn't quite pick up the same in the video. Now, the Blue Flame Jackson has been all wired up with the EMG 5766 set. We got the LED kill switch hooked up and the preamp is there too. I got the licensed Floyd Rose mounted and now it's time to string it up. But, there's a problem. This licensed Floyd Rose that I got in part of a bundle deal was missing its string blocks. At the time, I thought it was no big deal. I could get some replacement ones, but man, was I wrong. Sometimes there can be problems with licensed Floyd Roses. 
A real original Floyd Rose can cost over $200, so to keep the costs low, guitar builders can license the design and build their own. The problem with that is they're hit or miss. They might be good, but more than likely they aren't quite up to the level of a real Floyd Rose, which are extremely stable, consistent, and rebuildable. I have a bunch of other Floyd Roses around, licensed from LTD and Jackson, cheap Chinese-made knockoffs, and even some real German-made ones. None of the blocks from any of them fit in this model. They were too big. Another weird thing about this bridge is the lack of Allen heads on the screws like a normal Floyd Rose. There's no way I'm going to be able to use this thing. So here's the dilemma. I could either go out and buy a Floyd Rose special for about $80, or I could use this original Floyd Rose that I have on hand that I got in the same bundle deal. And I kind of already had plans for this Floyd Rose, and I wanted to keep the price of this blue flame Maple Jackson as low as possible. But I think I'm going to do it anyway. I'd rather build a better guitar that costs a little more, and it feels a little weird to order parts that aren't as good as what I have on hand. Plus, what would I rather play? The original Floyd Rose, of course. The Blue Flame Maple Jackson is just about done. And the Haxon 2 is ready for paint. Be sure to tune into the next episode to see my full plans for the Haxon 2, and to see what other new projects come in my way. I'm Mark Murray, and I thank you for watching Trash to Thrash. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be automatically notified next Thursday for episode 3.